Hey guys, hello, welcome. Boy, this is really exciting. I have to tell you what's going on here because we've been talking to the audience. Mother Nature has been teasing us because we can see the sun with the glasses on and then the clouds roll in. Now, just about a minute or so ago, suddenly yeah, there were oohs and ahs because you folks saw the, you could see the sun with your glasses, but it keeps going and coming with the clouds. And what they could see was the moon starting to cover just a small portion of the sun. And Andy Shanner, who is our expert here from the Lunar and Planetary Institute, was telling us that it's likely that the moon is going to rise from the bottom. The and bottom. So that's what, that what, that's what we've been watching and witnessing here, along with a few of our friends who just happen to be from all over the world. David Crowd doing what he does. He is in the crowd finding some of those people. And Dave, you got a little pop quiz fun ahead too. It is an international crowd here at Space Center Houston. Okay, so so who here is from, uh, from Mexico? Who's from Mexico? Raise your hand. You're from, don't be shy. There's more people from Mexico. Germany, who's here from Germany? From Germany, there you are. And you are from Egypt? Yes, sir. I'm from Egypt, from Cairo. From Cairo, Egypt. So what prompted you to come all the way to Houston, Texas to see this? Um, it's something that I've been wanting to see because it's the last time we ever got to see it, it was only like a, bit, a little, tiny, little tiny bit. So I'm here visiting my brother. He just came from Greenland. So we all just came in here last week. So we got an Airbnb and we decided let's just enjoy this. Let's come to NASA, not Dallas, let's just come to NASA and just experience the whole science, the International Space Houston. And like I'm here, so it's really Really great and I'm excited. You are in Space City oh, and you can hear the crowd. So so put on your glass so you can see everybody looking at it. Oh you've got that. Oh that's for the phone. Look at this device. So every now and then the crowd oohs and ahs because we get a break and the eclipse has just begun. So we've been throwing out a lot of terminology, eclipse terms. I thought we'd do a little quick. You want to take a question? We're doing a quiz. Okay, I've got a very big prize if you get this right. Okay, here we go. Uh, what is the umbra? What is the umbra? I, I don't want to get this wrong and embarrass myself. Is the umbra the black part that covers the moon? Yes, that's exactly right. Yes. So that's the shadow. The umbra is the darkest part of the moon's shadow. From within the umbra, the sun is completely blocked by the moon, as in the case of a total eclipse. So you got that one right. I don't actually have a prize for you, but thank you for being part of <laughs> You're welcome. Nope. Okay, so let's see. Where are my friends from Germany? Who's from? Come up here. Come. Welcome to Texas. Welcome to Houston. Come. Come up here. Come. What prompted you to come all the way from Germany today? I'm from Wiesbaden. That's uh, close to Frankfurt. And uh, yeah, well, it's very nice here in Houston. So we really enjoy. We also did go to San Antonio, and I uh, know Texas from. Um, before, because I was married with an American, and so um, I did travel quite a bit in the States already. Welcome back to Houston, then. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, here's the next question, our next quiz question. This is for you. So question number two, what is an umbrophile? What is an umbrophile? Have you heard of that word? Uh, no, unfortunately not. I'm not uh, I mean, I'm not bad in English, but this I didn't hear yet. So I didn't know what this was either. So you and I have the same problem. I had to look this up. An umbrophile is a solar eclipse aficionado. So you are an umbrophile because you have traveled oh. to view the eclipse. People who will do almost anything and travel almost anywhere to see the total eclipse. That is an umbrophile. And welcome to Houston. Thank you. It's, it's nice to have you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so from Mexico, come come over here. You volunteered a little bit. Uh, what is your name? Maxi. Welcome to Houston. You're from Mexico. What part of Mexico? Uh, Cancun. Ah, Cancun. We know Cancun, a little bit about that. Okay, so we have a question for you. First of all, what, what prompted you to make the trip to come all this way? Is it just for the eclipse? No, it was casually. Uh, I came to see my family. Uh, for my birthday and my nephew's birthday, and between those birthdays, there's the eclipse, so it's, it was a good idea. Perfect timing. Okay, here's your question. Can you define the term prominence? Do you know what prominence is, as, as it has to do with an eclipse? No. Do you know? I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know. I had to look this one up, too. So a prominence, 
is hot gas hanging just above the surface. It usually appears as an arc, and sometimes during an eclipse, you can actually see this prominence as an arc, so we'll be looking for that, as long as the sky clears a little bit. So Pat Cavlin back at headquarters at our KHLU 11 studios, checking on the weather. How are we doing cloud cover and rain-wise here in Houston? and across Central Texas along the path of totality. Pat. It's interesting, Dave, the farther south you go out of Houston, the more breaks we're getting in the clouds. But pff, I mean, look at this. This is the top of Mustang Tower. This is our transmitter tower in Missouri City. So this is about 2000 feet above the ground and we are socked into the clouds here. But there are some breaks here and there, mainly cloudy though across the board and a couple showers. I want to show everybody something really, really cool. If you're away from your TV for a second, come back and look at this on live visible satellite. Notice how it gets darker there. We're looking over the Pacific Ocean, right? So here's Mexico, there's Texas up in the uh, upper right-hand corner. There's the sun moving from east to west, and then all of a sudden the shadow. There's the moon going in front of the sun. So there's the eclipse happening right now. There's totality over the Pacific Ocean. That's going to keep moving on this path eventually over Texas as we go through the next hour or so. And again, there are some breaks in the clouds, so I think we're going to have a shot at it. Here at home, though, a couple thunderstorms starting to fire off, especially to the west of the city. We're going to have to keep an eye on these storms. This went out towards Columbus. Quite a few lightning strikes in just the last 10 minutes. We've got downpours going north of town as well. Another thunderstorm now just to the north of Liberty County. And Chris, some of these storms could turn severe as we go through the next few hours. Walk us through how Future Track looks this afternoon. Yes, we are expecting those storms to start flaring up, as you, Pat, just mentioned. And they're going to become more widespread as we get to the warmer parts of the day, but it's going to be interesting to note because once that full coverage comes over Texas, we might lose some temperature as we head into those afternoon hours. So it's going to be good to see how that affects storm coverage as we go into this afternoon, becoming more widespread by the 4 p.m. hour. So folks who all left Houston or planning to travel north of Houston, they're going to be dealing with this increased severe weather threats north of the woodlands, and we do have the possibility for some large hail and some possible tornadoes, and then that's not going to be over. We are expecting another round of showers and storms for Tuesday afternoon as well as lasting through Wednesday and then eventually conditions will clear out and we are expecting those uh, those weather patterns to start improving as we head into the end of our work week. However, looking at the main threats we do are including tornadoes, damaging winds and heavy downpours. So as we head into looking at the next five days, that severe weather threat definitely increasing for Tuesday and Wednesday. But if you are heading out and about, just keep in mind that we are seeing that Tuesday storm risk starting to increase with the potential threat being large hill and a possible strong tornado. We'll have more on that later in the newscast. Back to you. All right. Well